Thank you for joining us to learn more about our Bachelor of Performing Arts at the Arts Academy. My name is Aroha Tono and I'll be your webinar host for this event. Joining us today is co-program coordinator Anthony Crowley and current students Will Crook and Lucy Fitzgerald. Before we commence the session, I would like to begin by saying that Federation University Australia acknowledges the custodians of the lands and waters where our campuses are located and recognise their continuing responsibilities to care for country at these sites of teaching and learning. We pay our respects to elders past and present and extend our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander First Nation people. Now let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to today's session, part of the Your Fed Future webinar series. My name is Aroha. I work in the Future Students team at Federation. My role involves working with future students and what Federation University can offer you. I will be your host for today's webinar. Today we'll be talking to you about studying performing arts at the Federation University Arts Academy. Before we commence the session, I would like to begin by saying that Federation University Australia acknowledges the custodians of the lands and waters where our campuses are located and recognise their continuing responsibilities to care for country at these sites of teaching and learning. We pay our respects to elders past and present and extend our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander First Nation peoples. A recorded version of this webinar will be available from our online toolkit at federation.edu.au slash yourfedfuture. On this page, you will find extra content, including virtual campus tours, an ebook of our new course guide, webinar recordings, and more. So in today's webinar, I will be joined by program coordinator, Anthony Crowley, current Bachelor of Acting for stage and screen student, Will Cook, and current Bachelor of Music Theatre student, Lucy Fitzgerald. So throughout today's webinar, we would love to hear from you. So please post your questions in the chat. We will answer questions on the chat throughout the session. And we will also be running a live Q&A at the end of the session for further questions. For those just joining us or watching the recording of this webinar, welcome to you and let's get started. The Bachelor of Performing Arts is located at our prestigious Federation University Arts Academy, which is located in Ballarat on Camp Street. It is a three year full time course and prerequisites include completing year 12 with an English score of 20 and also completing an audition, which you'll hear more about from our program coordinator, Anthony. You will need to complete the audition along with an application form for the audition if you are interested in applying. Also, you would need to complete a application form for the course. If you are a school leaver and have just finished year 12, you will apply through BTEC. And anyone who isn't a school leaver will apply directly to the Federation University website. Please do not forget to fill in the supplementary form for the audition as it is a really important step in getting into the course. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Crowley. I am the co-program coordinator of the Performing Arts course at Federation University Arts Academy. Um, I'm also the lecturer in contemporary performance practice and I'm also a director, playwright, composer, as well as educator who has worked in Australia and internationally for lots of organisations, including the Walt Disney Company, NIDA, WAPA, the VCA and Malthouse Theatre, among others. I have written and produced several award-winning musicals and plays, including The Frail Man, which won the Wall Cherry Play of the Year, Motormouth Love Suckface, which was on the 2018 VCE playlist, and The Wild Blue, which received a Victorian Premier's Literary Award. Someone consider studying a Bachelor of Performing Arts. What are the likely career outcomes? The Performing Arts is an expanding career field. It has been disrupted in the short term, but in the long term, it has already begun adapting to the online world. Opportunities for performers have never been as robust, from large scale musicals and theatre, to employment with medium sized theatre companies, to regional touring and theatre and education. 
the growth of streaming companies such as Netflix and film and TV production in Australia and New Zealand have seen expanding opportunities for performing artists in our own backyard. The growth of the video game and other virtual industries is also creating work opportunities for performing artists. Looking further afield, students will apply their skills in areas as diverse as health, education, corporate entertainment, tourism, animation, and corporate narrative and training. Why study at Federation University and the Arts Academy? What is the difference between studying performing arts at the Academy than at other institutions? The quality of our training and the supportiveness and connectedness of our learning community. I put that up front. A performing arts degree doesn't label you as one kind of performing artist or another. It gives you extensive training in all key skill areas, including voice, singing, acting, dance, and movement, as well as the opportunity to apply these skills in theater and musical theater productions and projects. Being a regional campus, our students live work and study together as a community and support each other's learning and well-being through a philosophy of unconditional positive regard. <clears throat> Further study options. Further study options include Master of Teaching at Federation University or other institutions, a Bachelor of Arts Honours, Creative Arts Honours, or a Master of Fine Arts. Industry placement opportunities. The Bachelor of Performing Arts is a full-time studio-based course, so we do not offer industry placements. Instead, you will have the chance to work on a regular basis with creative professionals on practical projects that align with industry standards as well as the opportunity to meet and network through a variety of forums and extracurricular masterclasses. The audition process. What are we looking for in auditions? And a COVID-19 update. Through our audition process, we're looking for people who are authentic, engaged and well prepared. You'll find all the audition information on the Performing Arts webpage on the Fed Uni um, website. Applications open on August 2020. Timely applications close on Friday the 30th of October 2020 and late applications close at the end of November 2020. There are two rounds to the audition process. In the first round, you will prepare one of the classical monologues provided by us and either a music theatre song or a contemporary monologue of your own choice. And you can choose between either the song or the contemporary monologue, whatever sort of suits what your strengths are. We get a variety of people coming into the course. Some of them have auditioned with uh, two monologues, one of our classicals, one contemporary, and others are really keen to sing. So whatever suits you best. All first round auditions will be digital because of um, the COVID-19 situation. All applicants are required to create and submit a video submission by the 30th of October, 2020. If your first round audition is successful, you proceed to a second round or what we call a callback audition. Callbacks will be held on Tuesday, the 1st of December, Wednesday, the 2nd of December and Thursday, the 3rd of December. And they may be held in person or online to be announced. We'll be advised closer to the date. The facilities at Camp Street are situated right in the heart of Ballarat. The Arts Academy campus comprises voice, music, dance and acting studios, as well as the Post Office Box Theatre, which seats about 70 people, and the larger Helen McPherson Smith Theatre, which seats about 170. The training facilities are augmented by a student lounge, learning resource centre, as well as student accommodation facilities, which we have here on campus. Our alumni include a wide range of very successful performers across a diversity of careers. Um, our alumni includes a wide range of successful performers across a diversity of careers. Um, just to name a few, Josh 
Peterman is a graduate currently playing the lead role of Phantom in Phantom of the Opera on the West End. Sophie Smythe had toured the award-winning musical Robot Song for Arena Theatre Company and also won the 2019 Green Room Award for Best Writing in a Cabaret Work. Jazz Flowers played the lead role of Tracy Turnblad in the multi-award-winning production of um, Hairspray. Michelle Brazier, a creator and performer of comedy cabaret shows, including the award-winning Double Denim. Uh, and Ash Flanders, multi-award-winning playwright, screenwriter, and Auntie Donna, internationally feted comedy troupe, written and created by graduates uh, Broden Kelly, Mark Samuel Bonanno, and Zach Warren. So there are a plethora of our graduates out there working in a whole range of different um, performing roles, uh, all very you know, successful people. Um, and not everybody applies um, their degree to um, being a performer uh, in, a, in a musical or a, or a play. Some of them go on to um, produce work, some of them go on to create work for film and television. Some of them even apply their skills to other degrees, like a law degree, um, which enhances that. So one, I think one student's even done, applied his to managing a trucking company. So, you know, there are many applications for a degree in performing arts. Finally, I'd like to uh, mention the audition workshop that we've got coming up on Thursday, the 1st of October, 2020 at 11 o'clock. Um, it's online and you will find the link on our uh, webpage. Uh, senior staff will be available to offer advice and strategies to help you audition well in the age of COVID, uh, as well as to answer any questions that you might have uh, and just general all round advice. So. Um, that's free. I'm pretty sure that's free. Come along and uh, we'd love to, to meet you and answer your questions um, and look forward to seeing you all at the auditions. Bye bye. So our next presenter is Lucy Fitzgerald, who's a third year student part of our performing arts department. Followed by Lucy, we'll hear from William Crook, who is also a third year student. Thank you. So I am currently in my last year of study at Federation University, studying the Bachelor of Music Theatre. And I'm just gonna take you through all the different experiences I've had whilst at Fed. All the highlights, all the different opportunities I've been given, as well as all the development and learning I've done throughout the course. So I'm gonna begin with all the friendships and connections that I've made whilst here at Fed. Um, with Fed being in a regional town, majority of us in the course have had to live out of home. And for most of us, myself included, it being our first time, which meant that for the next three years, these people truly did become my family and are my second family. And all the friendships that I formed whilst at Fed, I can confidently say will be my friends for life. These are people that I have seen almost every single day and the people I truly rely on and I can't imagine my life without. And because the uni is so welcoming and inclusive, there's just no room for being judgmental or competitive with one another, which unfortunately is not always a common trait in the music theatre world. Um, but a lot of this does come from the fact that we don't all have our families to rely on. So we lift one another up to ensure that no one is struggling or left behind. Another reason the uni is so welcoming is largely to do with the amazing staff. Not only do we get the opportunity to work with current industry professionals, but we also get to work with people who truly care and truly want us to succeed. I can confidently say I have never once felt as though my teachers didn't care. They go above and beyond for us, especially during this really difficult time we're in, and not only want us to improve physically, but mentally as well, always ensuring that we are in a good place and supporting us when we aren't, which is vital for a demanding course such as music theatre. 
Now, obviously, social life is a large part of uni, and this is no different for the Arts Academy. Not only do we get to have amazing events such as our end of year ball known as Encores, which you can see in the PowerPoint there, all of us in our green, but we also get the experience to be both performing in and watching all the student shows put on throughout the year. These are the best times to connect with the other year levels and to see the amazing work being done by the Academy. For me, being surrounded by insanely talented people is definitely a highlight. Now, being from a freshly graduated 18 year old to now, I am amazed to see how much I have developed in almost three years. Being at FED, they ensure that we cover everything that performing is. We participate in weekly dance, singing and acting classes, covering both the technical and performative sides of the arts. And being so thorough in these practices has definitely made me feel confident in my skills. Not only have my skills improved, but both my confidence and maturity have skyrocketed since I joined the course. I definitely was very quiet and timid in first year, and I was super unsure about both who I was as a performer and as a person. But being taken out of my comfort zone and pushed to succeed has allowed me matu to mature into myself, as well as boost my confidence and make me a more open, versatile performer. Another awesome part of the performing arts courses is that we have the opportunity to do public performances. This is a great way to put our skills to use and sing as a cohort. We have sung at graduations, local festivals, as well as traveling to other regional towns to sing both with and for the local communities. These events are amazing ways to give back to the community, as well as to begin to get used to professional gigs. For me, one of the biggest highlights I've had whilst at uni was being lucky enough to perform a role originated by an alumni of the uni, Sarah Morrison. Um, getting to perform for her as well. Having the opportunity to gain these industry connections and being able to see what amazing things past graduates have gone on to do is so inspiring and reminds me of just how much talent we have at FED. And we also have the opportunity to work with guest choreographers and dancers in our dance classes, which for me is an amazing part of uni, being a dancer myself. Um, we get to participate participate in both mock auditions, which is um, mock style um, dance calls, as well as having different dance teachers from the industry in our classes. Now, lastly, I just want to talk to you about why I chose to study at FED. Um, for me, being from a dance background, I wanted a school that would push me and be a new challenge, as I've always had ingrained me ingrained in me to have a strong work ethic and I wanted a school that would reflect that. And seeing all the amazing work FED does, I knew that this would be an awesome school for that. But I also wanted a supportive environment with people I could lean on to get through sometimes gruelling work. Um, I want to be a professional performer and I needed a course that would prepare, prepare me for just that and I knew that FED would be the place for that. It sounds cheesy, but I know that I made the right choice and I'm pretty sure that you will too. So I hope that this PowerPoint has been helpful and I can't wait to speak to you guys in the Q&A. Thank you. Hello, my name is William Crook and I'm currently a third year graduating student studying a Bachelor of Acting for Stage and Screen at the Federation University Arts Academy in Ballarat. I grew up uh, in the Yarra Valley in country Victoria, Hillsville. Um, I come from a family of creative individuals, but not live performers as such, or performers really. Um, so I was introduced to theatre through a grade six performance that I did. Um, but more at high school 
through um, school musicals that I did from year seven to year 12. And I also studied VCA drama and theater studies, which for me cemented the want to undertake actor training after I graduated, uh, which I did. I also um, volunteer through Lord Summers Camp and Powerhouse, uh, which is a not-for-profit organization in Melbourne. And they have a powerhouse thespian guild there, which also I've been involved with and motivated me to undertake some more professional actor training. Why did I choose Fed Uni's Arts Academy? Um, ultimately, it gave me the opportunity to move out of home, which uh, I wasn't... Um, there was no need for me to move out of home quickly. Um, everything was fine, but... It was definitely appealing, and I wanted my independence quickly after high school. Uh, so that was appealing. Um, also, the students I met on Open Day up here spoke very highly of the course and the teachers up here. Um, the facilities on campus are outstanding. Um, and it's a very friendly and encouraging environment up here at the Arts Academy, which is, um, I would say, unique to a um, learning environment, from my experience anyway. Um, the course up here I found appealing as it teaches more I found um, than specifically acting or musical theatre. I have been introduced to different performance uh, aspects um, such as theatre design, dance, stand-up, um, and also um, stagecraft as well, like stage management, um, set designs, um, prop designs, those sort of things, and teaching it and encourages teaching in the future as well. So my first year studying at Fed Uni was a lot of fun. I got to live on residence with Fed Uni Living. I met a lot of friends some of which I now live with in a share house in Ballarat. The first year experience itself is quite educational, I find. It's very foundational in what you learn later in the course. Looking back, I learnt um, very early foundations for acting, um, theory classes for acting, voice singing classes as well. Learnt tap, jazz and ballet um, dance. A big highlight for my first year looking back as well would have been, would be a Heritage Weekend performance that we did. We did that on a Saturday morning to about 80 audience members on a cold Ballarat day at the front of the um, art gallery in Ballarat. It was about the last 100 years of technology in Ballarat. And that was a lot of fun, simply because it was our first chance as a cohort to really use the skills that we had learnt in our course um, and take them into a practical environment and showcase them. My second year up here studying was a lot harder. It, it normally is. It's, it's prepared for you in first year, so you know what you're getting into second year. It is the year that you learn your technique as an actor and you put together the, the repertoire in which you build yourself on as a creative performer, as a performer. Um, and that is what you take into third year, which is the professional environment. So in semester one of second year, we learnt height well we looked at height and language in acting class we got a chance to self-devise height and language performances with our own written work uh, we looked at greek theater shakespeare and moliere as well in this semester of study personally i found an interest in classical text and classical literature which i didn't previously know i had and that is you could call a career aspiration going forward after i graduate from the arts academy my second semester up here, um, we study realism, naturalism, contemporary 
European, American, Australian theatre works. That was accompanied by a show that we did called Bronte by Polly Teal, directed by our head acting teacher at the uni as well, which was a lot of fun. The weight of second year is something that I definitely want to talk about briefly because it is very heavy. It's a lot of work. I was on, so it's five days a week full time and I was on campus contact hours, seven to nine hours a day. And then Thursday, Friday, I was working late nights to be able to pay rent because I live up here independently and a Sunday as well. And then those gaps in the weekend is sit almost full-time study again as you're catching up on the homework you need to prepare for the following week. So those timetabled study classes in study classes in second year, like acting, dance, singing, voice classes, lectures, and then your shows. But then you're running a lot of scenes, a lot of um, student-run production rehearsals, monologue rehearsals with a team of other students you're with. Um, you're going over dance choreo chore you're um, also doing your production stagecraft work for the show that you're in and the biggest one is probably just learning lines there are a lot of lines to learn in second year because there are a lot of classes that require you to be prepared with your lines learnt and your acting work done walking into them so that takes up a lot of your time as well out of class but second year to me is where the most change happens to your technique. Third year is a difficult one and probably the most different compared uh, in the entirety of the course compared to second year and first year. It's its own entity I, I feel. I haven't obviously completed it yet, we're only halfway through and we started the year by doing screen acting classes and getting introduced to camera acting techniques and what it is to work on a film set. Previously, it's just been live performance in the room, on the floor with teachers and, and your fellow students. We continue dance classes at the start of this year as well, which is in tap and jazz, no longer ballet for us actors. However, then the powers that there be uh, made us uh, go home and have to continue learning remotely. So all the classes that we had were put online. So we did online acting classes. We've done dance classes online over Zoom now, voice classes. We did our mock audition online, online a live Zoom call with our teachers and a panel, which was interesting. We also have been doing um, self tapes from home and rehearsing a play from home, which was our semester one show. And we still are rehearsing that. The extracurriculum projects we've been doing this year as well in lockdown um, have also had a big effect on what the overall year has been, I found, simply because you don't spend as much time as uni at uni with the teachers there isn't as much work. The teachers have done an outstanding job putting it online. Um, they have been absolutely amazing and I couldn't think of better teachers to be looking after me and our cohort this year. But it definitely has been difficult. So fortunately last year, me and uh, two of my friends that I study with at the acting, um, in the acting course, we started a podcast so we've been spending a lot of time recording that and posting those. They're available on the SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, if you're interested. Um, we, it's called The Out of the Stair Show. Um, and we've also been doing self-devised writing, and a thing we've dubbed the monologue Chris Kringle, which is we all write our own monologues, um, send them in to another one of our students, um, they have been shuffling them up and then sending them back out to the people who wrote them, but a different monologue for everyone. So we don't know who wrote the monologue we're performing and who is performing the one that we wrote. So that's been a lot of fun. So that brings me now to the end of my PowerPoint slide. 
I hope I've given some sort of an insight of what it's like to study up here and how the course is shaped from a student's perspective. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free to ask them. I'm more than happy to answer. And I wish you all the best going forward in whatever you choose to study. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much to our presenters today for that insight into studying performing arts at the Arts Academy. Um, so now we've come to our live Q&A part of our webinar series where Anthony, Will, Lucy and I will be available to answer any questions you might have. So any questions you have, please feel free to pop them into the chat box and we're happy to answer them. Um, so we've got a few questions a lot actually <laughs> that have come through which is great to see so thank you so much for those questions um i think we'll go through them now and we'll get uh, there's perspectives from uh anthony will and lucy so the first one is do you have to write many essays in your study what is the percentage written exams to practical exams so um we'll hear from anthony first and then we'll pass it over to will and lucy to ask about their experiences with exams so thank you guys yeah sure look your training has a has a predominantly a practical emphasis um in each course that you do there's a written component generally speaking um an essay is about 1200 words in length Although in some courses you, you create a journal, if you're doing a production, you might create a journal to, um, to document um, your process as uh, an artist through that and also the actual, you know, structure of what you have to do as a performer. Um, but there is, some, there is one theory subject or two that you do forum has like a theatre um, history and um, theoretical kind of um, bent to it. So you'll do more written work in that class, but mostly you'll be acting, singing, dancing, you know, learning the practical elements of, of performance. What do you think, Will, Lucy? Uh, yeah, I hope my mic's on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that was pretty perfectly put. Um, it is very much performance based and you're doing a lot of work on the floor um, and a lot of line learning at home. So the written components are sort of drowned out and, you know, by the, the amount of practical work that you have. But there are essays we have to do, probably about three, four, five a semester, depending what year you're in. And yeah, there's a lot of writing in uh, acting classes like note taking and going over those notes later at home. So yeah, there is um, theory as well and essays. Yeah, they're mostly reflective as well. So a lot of it is if you've done journals and things like that, which we do a few for all of our productions, um, a lot of it is looking back at, um, yeah, what you did in your performance um, throughout the um, workshop rehearsal process. So it is a lot of just reflecting on what you've done and making goals for your next um, performances and things. So they're not they're not too strenuous. They're, they're pretty good. Awesome. Um, so our next question is, um, is the course likely to be face to face next year or still online? Um, probably myself and Anthony can sort of try to have a crack at this. <laughs> Um, but unfortunately, we don't actually have a specific date that we'll be returning at this time, I believe, Anthony? No, we don't. I think everybody knows the situation is evolving and with stage, we're on stage three, well, Ballarat's on stage three restrictions. That's right, isn't it, Luce? Yeah. And, yeah. and Melbourne is on stage four restrictions. Um, so we can only play it like the rest of the country by ear at the moment. That's my, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yes, we're still, yeah, we're, we're sort of just in lieu just like you are. So um, hopefully, you know, the sooner the better. Um, obviously, that's what we all want in the end. But yeah, we're sort of just waiting on um, recommendations from the Australian government on how to sort of pro proceed with um, on campus study. So yeah, just watch the space. Hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. <laughs> Um, so the next question is, can we watch this webinar later? Is it being recorded? So yes, you can definitely watch this uh, webinar again. Uh, you can find the recordings on the 
Federation University website under the Your Fed Future webinar series link, um, and I've posted that in the chat for you today. Um, so the next one is, I live in Melbourne, Victoria. Would I still have a chance to study at Federation University? So um, we'll hear from Anthony, and then we'll obviously yep, hear from Will and Lucy as well about that. So yeah, take it away, Anthony. <laughs> Oh, the short answer is yes, of course you can. But um, the longer answer is that we, we highly recommend that you relocate to Ballarat. I'm sure Will and Lucy will have <laughs> an input to that. But look, it's um, it's a highly intensive course that you're working on on Friday 9 to 6 plus you know, you know, all the other stuff you've got to do. So it's just not sustainable living in Melbourne and, and commuting, but um, but maybe I'll throw to Lucy and Will who can give their personal insight into that. Yeah, so I, I live in Melbourne. I'm from the eastern suburbs. Um, I go home most weekends as well, obviously not right now. Um, but during the uni year normally, I went home pretty much most weekends unless I was working or I had another thing I couldn't do. It's super good. It's about a two-hour drive at most, two hours on the V-line. Um, the V line's really nice and pretty, so it's actually quite nice. But and there's so many opportunities um, to stay in Ballarat as well. Both Will and I stayed on campus residence, um, which there are, I think. I mean, some, I don't want to be wrong, but there are at, when we were in first year at least there were like scholarships and things that you could have for that if um, to make it a little bit cheaper, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's super easy to. Um, find accommodation. There's always a fed uni student looking for a new roommate or something like that. So it's super simple. Yeah. Will? Um, yeah, I definitely recommend relocating, um, especially in second year. There isn't much time like my my <laughs> sort of process I got into after finishing uni was walking home and doing voice memos about what I was going to do when I got home and it was only a 20 minute walk. So. <laughs> Like that's what it tells you about how much time you have at night and in the morning. Um, but other than that, it's a lot of fun. Like it's a really good opportunity in a very safe environment to experience moving out of home for the first time. And Res is exceptional at doing that. They have such great environments and rules and regulations. So I definitely recommend it. There's also, if you're looking at moving up to Ballarat and Res isn't for you, maybe you're older and have already lived out of home and don't want to be stuck in that environment maybe. Um, there's a Fed Uni house hunt page um, that you'll be you can be accepted into if you're um, like successful in getting a spot. So and there's that's where a lot of the talk goes on about um, current students looking for housemates that are maybe in above year levels to them and they've moved out and they're looking for a housemate and they have a room. So Fed Uni house hunt or well, something along the lines of that. It's a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for that, Anthony, um, Will and Lucy. So I'll just, I think the next few questions are just all about entry requirements. So we'll try to just kind of smash all these out together. Um, so what is required to be enrolled into this course? So um, thanks for your question. I've put in the link for the requirements, but basically the requirements, requirements are you need to sit and audition and be successful. Um, if you are a year 12 school leaver, you would need to finish and successfully complete year 12 with a study score of 20 in any English. Um, and for non year 12 application applicants, sorry, you must also sit in audition. Um, so everyone needs to sort of sit in audition um, and previous higher education studies with a pass. Um, audition information is available in the links as well, because I can see a few questions about auditions. Um, and the link to the applications are in the chat as well. Um, so here's a question for everyone. So how good does your ATAR need to be, guys? Um, I think uh, that one's self-explanatory, but I'll pass it over to you guys to um, give your insights. Um, but there is no ATAR, just a trick question there. Uh, over to Anthony, though, first. That's right. Can... Yeah, no, we, we, we asked for, a, for an English, uh, English three and four, of, 20 but as, as far as ATAR goes we, we look at the audition not the ATAR so it's about how well you get through that particular process as to whether you're selected into the course um, and I can talk a little more about that but maybe we'll get to a question about it later but we don't yeah what do you think yeah maybe you hear from Will and Lucy how um, I guess 
How easy was it for you guys in year 12 knowing that you didn't have to have an ATAR? Yeah, my ATAR was shocking. So um, that's like not to put people off not trying in year 12, but <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't really lucky to have an amazing ATAR. But you know, definitely try. Um, but yeah, I tried hard with the English knowing that that was a requirement and got that quite easily and um, just focused on my theatre studies and drama classes I was doing, I guess. Yeah, I, um, there is definitely some benefit on, I guess, trying hard. I, I still recommend it. I'm kind of the same. Mine definitely wasn't the best, but um, you still want to try hard. Because, I, like I said before, a lot of the um, scholarships for the res um, entries are based on if you get above a certain ATAR. Um, they're not high, high, but you can probably look on the website of what those requirements are. So they're kind of good goals if you want to go towards an ATAR, but definitely there is, for the course, there's no there's no pressure to have 90 plus ATAR because it's all about your performing, performing side, yeah. Awesome, and just on ATARs, so this might be a bit of a um, benefit for you to try to get your ATARs. I've actually just put in a link to our High Achievers Scholarship. So um, if you have a look there, with any um, ATAR over 90, 90 ATAR, sorry, um, you get $5,000 cash and one academic year of accommodation with Fed Uni Living. Um, for ATARs between 80 and 89.95, it's one year of accommodation with Fed Living um, and also uh, personal development services. So that's with both ATAR. So that's definitely the benefit for trying um, to get a high ATAR, guys. But like Lucy and Will said, you know, there were no ATAR requirements. So they sort of had a, um, you know, fairly less stressful, I guess, year 12. Um, but we'll move on to the next question. So there's a question about accommodation scholarships. So um, Anthony just posted in a link for you in regards to the scholarships that we have available to Federation University. So please have a look at those ones. So obviously the High Achievers Scholarship I was just talking about. Uh, where can we find the link to the classical monologues for the auditions? Anthony's linked that for you as well. So that's great. Um, and the next one is, can you attend the audition workshop even if you are not auditioning next year? So. The answer is definitely yes. The more chance you get to kind of like, I mean, we love actors, so don't we? We just, we love people who love the same thing we love. So come, come to it. It's free this year. It doesn't cost you anything either. Um, and learn about the course. Um, in any institution I've taught at, I've, I've seen young people come many times to many workshops and many auditions and it's the ones that really have that avid interest that you know wind up being successful so you know yes please we would love to meet you and love to get to know you awesome and do you work with year levels other than your own so i'll pass it over to anthony um lucy and will um just to give you guys insights to that question um you train within your own year level but I'll throw it to uh, Will and Lucy now, but because they can talk because uh, even though you train within your own year level and assessments aren't always open to other students, there's this really vibrant community. So you're constantly engaging and interacting with each other and seeing each other's work. We have a really strong culture of, of coming to see the work that we do and the presentations that we do sometimes when it's not a, you know, a full production. Um, Will, can I... Is that a good? Yeah, no, absolutely. The um, support from other year levels is astounding. Astounding. Like in first year, we had third years that were in the middle of their final showing, like their you know last week of rehearsal periods, taking the afternoon off to come and watch the first years do a live showing. So um, you definitely build close friendships with year levels above you. First year is great for that. There's there's always social events going on, and because you're all living up here in Ballarat. You know, you're always seeing each other and you're living with each other if you're not on res. Um, one of my good friends was living with second years in his first year and then third years in his second year. So you do um, have great friendships with other year levels, but you don't work with them and learn with them, you know, in your timetable to study. Yeah, pretty much the same as well. I, um, yeah, you definitely don't... Um, work and train along them but I still keep in contact with so many graduates from last year and the year before and yeah with all the different social events even just the 
um, we call it Slound, but it's pretty much the main area of the uni. Um, I'm not even sure why it's called Slound, but it is. Um, but everyone eats lunch with each other there. We hang out between classes. Um, it really is a bit like one of those dance movies, the really lame ones where they're all hanging out in the hallways. Is everyone just hangs out with each other and it's awesome. You get to talk, you get to debrief on what you're doing, what the other year levels are doing. And like Ant said, we get to go to all the shows um, and get to see what everyone does, which is probably one of my favourite parts. I love getting to see what everyone else, even like in the acting course and in other year levels, like everyone else, what they do and what they've been learning. Yeah. And do you need to have professional a professional dance background? No, you don't need to have a professional dance background. We, we mean, we train you. Um, but look, having said that, look, any any dance experience that um, you do have is really uh, valuable and helpful um, to the audition. And definitely if you get into the course, um, we train a, a really broad range of, of skills. We, we train students who enter the course with a really begin with beginner dance skills right up to um, to students who have, who have been doing dance since they were five years old, if not younger. So, you know, there's a broad range and we try to accommodate that within the the course. Um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, and does having a disability such as hearing loss affect your chance of studying here? No. No. No, we're so interested in, in all kinds of, you know, um, for, you know the, the performing arts industry is is really diverse and getting more diverse um and and so yeah we're, we're interested in, in in all all artists all young people all young artists definitely and i've just um put popped in the link um to our student support page just so you can see all the support services that are available to you while you're studying here as a student um, and how much experience do you need Well, actually, I mean, I know I, I mean, I'm happy to answer that question, but how much ex could I go to Will and Lucy yeah, and yeah, just definitely. ask how much experience they brought in? Because I think they probably both entered really well. They both said they, you both yeah. entered straight out of high school, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So, what experience did you guys bring in from that point into the course, Lucy? Could you go? Yeah. Um. So, dance-wise, I I did come back come from a dance background. I've been dancing since I was three I think um, so I guess in that way that was more of a my strong point but say acting I had done VC drama did a few little plays for my school um, but in that side of things I really hadn't done much experience in it singing I did a few choirs and um, things like the Australian Girls Choir but again I really had um, choirs are great. Choir, yeah. choirs, choirs are great training. School choirs, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you sing and blend in with other people really well. Harmonies, all of that, so helpful. But in terms of you know different styles of singing and uh, acting and all of that, I was yeah I had a very base level um, experience. Yeah, and you just build it up. You get all the training here. So yeah, Will. Yeah, I um I didn't. I don't think I've done dance at all before the uni course maybe i did a ballroom class once but um that's yeah that's about it uh i just sort of um did all my high school productions i did theater studies and the shows we did that that requ required in year 11 year 12 and drama i did a little bit of performing with a volunteer organization that i um volunteer with but not too much else i'd sort of just the only advice, the best advice I reckon I could give is just put your hand up for everything, really. And like, no experience is bad experience. And as long as you're you're willing to come and give it your all and learn, um, then you're perfect. So awesome, that's awesome to hear. Um, so there's just a few questions about the Bachelor of Music Theatre and the Bachelor of Acting for Stage and Screen. Um, so just to sort of clear things up, these two degrees have become one and they're now called the Bachelor of Performing Arts. Um, so that's to, just to answer all your questions for that one. Um, and there's just a few more questions about past experiences. Um, so I think that um, both Lucy and Will have touched base on that one. Um, and I'll 
also link you for the supplementary form for the music theatre course on the website. So that's just the audition form, guys. So make sure that you do fill that out um, when applying for the courses, but also two separate forms that you'll need to fill out. Um, if you do need a hand with those forms, feel free to um, give us a call. We're more than happy to um, give you a hand with that. Awesome. So um, is auditioning is the auditioning process for music theatre and acting the same? So yeah, just like I mentioned, uh, the course is now one and it's called the Performing Arts course. Um, and the next question, what would the ratio be of applicants to positions offered, please? That one. Uh, it varies from year to year. So um, some years it's been in the past I've had 300 applicants and, and, and 60 positions. Last year it would have been close to maybe 90 in the same. So it, it all depends on, on the year level, the birth rate from years before. Um, this year, I guess we'll see with COVID-19 because, you know, who knows what's going to happen because of that. Definitely. A lot of changes happening for this year, but hopefully, um, you know, like we mentioned before, we want to get back on campus and back to our performances as soon as possible. Um, I bet Lucy and Will have been itching to sort of get back on the stage. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll, we'll get that all sorted, um, you know, obviously waiting for, for, our, for the uh, COVID to finish. Um, so just a few more questions. Sorry, just reading them off here. So yeah, most of them um, are about the um, course becoming one. So just to clear things up again, um, the course is actually an overview of all singing, dance and acting. And it's just uh, an umbrella under the performing arts course now. So that's, I guess, a benefit for for the course as well. You get to, you know, get all three of the um, amazing creative, um, creative skills out of it. So let me just have a look. How come the courses have merged into one and will it be different? Will it be a different structure? I think I'll chuck that one over to Anthony for that one. Yeah, sure. Um, the, I, I can't tell you why because I, you know, I came and it was. <laughs> um, however, I've got to say, I taught everywhere and this idea of splitting courses up is <laughs> a really kind of like, you know, Recent idea, when I was at NIDA, um, those students, and I taught there and I was involved with the place for quite a while, um, did everything. You know, there was no division between music theatre or, or acting like, like we have. There was just this, this, this um, philosophy that an actor had to be a complete actor. And if you look at some of the people that, that we admire, if you look at Hugh Jackman, he wasn't a musical theatre student, he was an acting student. Um, who came out and said, oh, you know, I, I think I can do that because he could. So um, I think the reason why the course be, has become what it is is because that's absolutely the way to train an actor. And it is the new way to, to well, you know, we're returning. What, what was old is new again. Um, it's the best way to train an actor. And the new course doesn't deprive students of um, anything that the split courses did. It, um, it actually it actually provides a wealth of riches to students based on my experience at Whopper and, and NIDA and the VCA, which may be, you know, it's just, it's just wonderful to watch a student come into the course who doesn't think of themselves as a singer, um, who suddenly discovers that they have that capability and to watch them grow and kind of bring their, um, they're acting into that same sphere as this new skill that they're developing. It's just the most wonderful thing. So, um, you know, it's, I think it's a fabulous course and I've taught of them all. I think it's great. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Anthony. Um, so just a few more questions have come through. Is VC music performance useful for this course, course and school musicals? So maybe we'll um, throw back to Will and Lucy just to hear your experience in, in your last years um, in high school. Yeah, definitely. Any experience is good experience in my opinion. Um, school musicals for me was what made me interested in performing. 
I didn't, it's not necessarily training in at school musicals. The training happens here, but if you have the drive and the interest, then that's all you need at that point. Um, music, music background. I'm not a musical theatre student. I live with two musical theatre students. Um, so it's probably better for Lucy to answer this. But from my opinion, from, my, from what I see in my house, at least, um, a lot of them are helping each other out with underscoring and um, transposing music. So, I'm sh yeah, any experience is good experience. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I did um, study music performance in VCE. It was so helpful. We do um, do a lot of, yeah, like sheet, like reading sheet music and um, just that knowledge of how to read music and knowing your things like your intervals and how to transpose and even things like basic chords is just so helpful to then be able to accompany yourself when practicing at home um, and learning stuff. So it's definitely super helpful. And just like Will said, um, the musicals that I did at school was where I found my passion for music theatre. I'd done everything kind of separately. So that was like the chance that you had to see how you could combine them as one big art form. And yeah, every, like you said, every experience you have is, is good and is helpful. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And um, how long does the course go for year to year to what months and when are holidays and semesters? So, yep. um, we usually start training uh, in March in a normal year. And the first break comes in like Easter and the second big break comes in kind of July and then you're kind of back at the start of August or sorry, end of July, start of August and you go through to sort of September usually, um, except if you're in third year <laughs> and then we just work them solid all the way. No, then they get sort of a break in September and then you continue to probably late November, I think. Um, yeah, generally that's the timeline. Oh. Awesome, thank you for that, Anthony. And do you get many one-on-one -on -one lessons with your mentors to improve a certain skill such as singing? So I might pass it over to Lucy and Will first, just so that they can talk about their experience. And then um, if you wanna chuck anything in, Anthony, just feel free to. <laughs> um, for the most part, everything is mainly done in a group setting. Uh, most of the time you'll be split up into smaller groups as well. So um, for things like your technique classes, like your singing and acting and dance classes, you won't be in a big class of 90 people. There'll be like 20 around, depending on what it is. So you definitely do have smaller groups so you can get more um, individual training. Uh, the only real time we've had one-on-one -on -one time was in third year for some one-on-one um, -on -one coaching sessions in music theatre just to practice our um, some of our repertoire songs and stuff like that. And there's also lots of teachers around campus who do um, paid singing lessons as well. So if you want are wanting to continue your training um, and to get your singing better and your technique better outside, you can, if you want to put some money towards it, you can also pay to get private lessons. Um, but within the uni, most of it's group, yeah. Yeah, I've had private lessons with a teacher um, that was previously associated with the musical theatre course. So that's definitely available. Um, I've also never run into a lecturer that has said no to a private session. Like if you've ever said, oh, can we meet up Monday morning for a free moment? They're more than enthusiastic to make that happen. Um, and that's awesome. Like that's one of the best parts of uni because you can't, you don't all learn at the same level and at the same pace. Like that's just impossible to make happen. And the teachers are very um, focused and also very aware that that is the truth. Like, so if you're struggling with something, you can always catch up outside of class for 20 minutes in their office or um, just uh, like we do as actors, a little bit of singing um, each week. And so we have our singing teacher is amazing. And so I struggled with my singing for a little bit. And so I'd come in an hour before class started and we'd do a, our solo song that I had to do later in the semester and then class would start. And so um, it's very easy to get one-on-ones and run over things if you need help. So that's what the uni's for, I guess. Yep, 
Awesome. Thank you so much. And we'll just have one more question just to finish with um, for probably Lucy and Will. So um, how did you go with transitioning to performing arts after year 12 and what tips could you provide to year 12 students um, looking at studying performing arts after high school? Um, transition. It was the, probably the biggest transition for me that was noticeable and scary was moving away from home. I was sort of really ready to study acting. I had been for six months in high school. I'd sort of, personally, I'd sort of lost a bit of drive at the end of high school, sort of getting over it, um, as a few people do. Nothing wrong with that. And so I was ready to come to uni, and so I was more than enthusiastic to start. So it wasn't really this big shock to me. It was just like I'm just doing year 12 again because that's the same amount of contact hours you have, but you're doing the thing you love. And so there was nothing... Um, nothing better than that, really. And um, there's a second part of that question that I think I've forgotten. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, just any tips that you would offer to yeah. um, current year 12s finishing and looking to start performing arts? Um, yeah, well, just experience. If anyone asks you to sing a song or do a scene or read a play, do it. Read a play. Um, watch watch your favorite actors and study them while you like them that's always good i find and um read and reading reading plays reading shows reading like reviews and also discovering your own opinion on other performers work i think is a good way to begin learning what type of performer you want to become there we go lucy um yeah i guess similar to um will uh the biggest transition was definitely the moving out of home and also um, joining a new um, environment where you didn't know anyone, which for me was terrifying because I am like, I sometimes get a bit Ugh, with new people. So it definitely was a big jump, but you just have to be confident and you just have to um, be true to yourself and also just like know that it will take time. You're not going to have a million friends on the first day of uni. So you just got to take it easy. Um, and then allow yourself to settle and figure out what you're doing and where you are. Um, and some tips for your 12s, I guess, would be um, just don't say no to anything. Like, be open to trying everything, um, especially coming into a course where you learn so many different styles and so many different techniques. The more you know, um, the less it will be scary when you get to it. So look to try new parts of performing arts, find different things that you've never known about. Um, if that's, if you like singing, like look at different styles of songs and different styles of music or different styles of acting, think dancing, anything like that. Just be open to everything. And yeah, come into the course with a really open, um, yeah, open mind, I guess. I said open so many times. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. One weird one I just thought of to add then, sorry. No, you're um, right. When I went to the I went to the NIDA open day in twenty sixteen and I sort of asked the same question. I I just remember then I got the answer. I can't I can't remember who the lecturer was there. But he said, When you know, in the next year of your life before you go and audition, put the phone down when you're in public situations. I know it's difficult at the moment because we're all in lockdown in Melbourne, but you know, instead of being on your phone on public transport, look around and read people that are on the train and, like, work out what it is to be a different person in the world and how different people react and um, different postures and um, gestures and postures and positions that people put their bodies in. And that's a very – that was – you know, I sort of did that for a bit and I found that very interesting when I came to uni and started doing movement classes and voice classes – because you sort of already have it subconsciously in the back of your mind how different people can react and sound. So little things like that I found help, but just observing the world. Sorry. That's awesome to see. And um, Anthony, do you have any tips for our audiences when coming into the course or looking to come into the course? Oh, be, be well prepared. Like know your work really well and, and know the play or the musical that you're seeing it from, all the basic kind of... Things are really important, um, and we get a lot of Year 12 students applying, and and of course they've got this really intense experience that they've just had, and then they kind of think, oh, I've got to audition as well. But 
just to structure your time early. So, take, you know, take 15 minutes a day to just look at your audition pieces. You don't, don't cram it at the end. Slowly build up your muscle memory on them before you to get to that really intense experience. Um, it'll just make it easier to remember and to be prepared for that day when you're suddenly uh, under the pump. And, um, and also, as you can see from these two really cool um, third years, um, you know, we want to meet you, you know, we're really interested in authenticity, you know, we're, we're interested in who you are because uh, as an actor, um, Will, Lucy, I think you agree, you've got to bring yourself to the work, you know, you have to, so we want to meet you, you know, and so, and you are enough, you know, so prepare well, bring you to the audition, um, and your authenticity and your uniqueness, because we value that at, at, at the Arts Academy, you know. And in life, we do. We yeah. love all the great actors because they are authentic people who then we, we can relate to. We want to hear them <laughs> tell our stories, you know. Definitely awesome. Um, I would just like to take this moment to say a huge thank you to Anthony, Will and Lucy for giving up their time um, tonight. Thank you so much for the amazing presentations and um, I hope this was an awesome insight to all of you watching um, of what to expect at our Arts Academy and just a few reminders that I want to leave with you before we finish up. So the Federation University Virtual Open Day is this Sunday the 16th of August. If you are interested in coming along please register on our website. I'll have the link in the Q&A if you are looking to register. Our audition masterclass, so it's a great opportunity for you to join our audition masterclass so that you feel confident and well prepared when recording your audition video. Um, so like Anthony mentioned in the presentation, this event is on Thursday the 1st of October, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and the best thing about it is it's free and you can actually attend from the comfort of your home, which is awesome. Um, and applications are open for the video, uh, for the audition. So feel free to fill out that application form and I'll link that into our live. Q&A. Um, but now we've come to the end of our presentation. So again, thank you, Anthony, Will and Lucy for your time. Um, thank you so much to everyone who attended and good luck with, with the rest of your guys here and just let us know if there's anything that we can do. Have a lovely night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.